Hey there, it's Nikolai again. So it's been a couple of days since uh, my match with Anish. As you see, I still haven't shaved. But I wanted to to look at that interesting hand we had with a 10-10-10 up top that I played. Just kind of curious how unlikely that is um, and whether that was the right move. I mean, pretty obviously it was the right move, but just wanted to look at some numbers. So to that end, I also thought maybe I'd uh, demo some of the simulations that I run. So let me uh, show you what my screen looks like. So first, let's remember what the hand looked like. See, I'm in the game I, with the niche. Let's go back to hand history. Scroll back a couple of hands. One more. One more. Yep, this is a 10, 10, 10 up top. So let's uh, review the hand quickly. See, I started with kings in the middle. Uh, immediately made two pair in the bottom. Got the tens, put them up top. Then right away caught the case five and the king, which is incredibly lucky, and got the ten in the last card. So I think at the time I thought that I had a you know maybe a decent sort of outside chance of getting those tens up top. But let's see how how right or wrong I might have been. I've, I've recorded the screens from the game with Anish. Like uh, this was uh, the second move, the interesting one where I played two tens up top. And I you know, wanted to run the simulation and see you know, whether that was the right move, although obviously it was the right move, and how likely was me getting that, those trips and qualifying. So this is, uh, this is Xcode, which is how you run uh, code on, on a Mac. And you know, there's a bunch of code. Some people will see what this works, but you know, the point is just that what it's doing is I put in the information of the hand in this inform in this scheme, so you can sort of see it up top here. I put in, you know, what, what the hand looked like, what cards were dead, what move I wanted to make. Um, also, the value of Fantasyland. Obviously, getting to Fantasyland has value, and instead of playing out the Fantasyland hand and see what happens, I just give sort of a, a, a flat bonus for getting there in this simulation. In this case, 10 points, which people may disagree whether that's too much or too little, but it's sort of a nice consensus value, and it's, it works pretty well. Uh, what the simulation does is take a look at this hand, for example. Um, yeah, loading, give it a second. So, so here, I'm putting in the information for both players. Then you shuffle the deck, and you say, okay, uh, play for both players to the end you know, with the information they're allowed to have. So I'm going to simulate all of all of Anisha's moves and my moves back and forth, and then I record the answer. And he's going to be, you know, entitled to know his discards, you know, but not mine, and vice versa. This is the kind of thing that's pretty easy to do with a computer. In fact, easier with a computer than with people. And the nice thing about simulating that is that, look at this. So here I've run it 500 times for this hand. And if we wait a few seconds will get the next step, which is 100 more simulations. Um, as you can sort of see from the time, it takes about a minute to run 100 of these simulations, you know, whereas with humans, it would take a lot longer to roll it out. Of course, you could, you know, you could take a look at this hand and do the math and say, well, is this percentage to get this and then that, but, you know, other than some very specific cases, the conditional probabilities get really, really out of hand. So, you know, it's, it's, did we do one more? So it's, it's, it's not only easy to make a mistake, but um, you just can't, you know, it's, it's just the math is going to be different every time. So it's a little bit easier to just play out both sides, record the answer, roll it back, play it out. You know, it, it's, it's, very, it's very slow. It takes a lot of effort, but it's the only way to know that you're getting decent answers. Of course, you know, the AI plays them perfectly, but this is kind of like asking the question is... If both sides are played by reasonable players, what is the value of this hand? What is the average value? So if we skip ahead to the answer, playing after, after 3,800 um, times running it, on average, my side of this hand with the 10-10 up top is, is plus 5 points against the niche. Uh, this is just sort of the 95% confidence interval. So we're quite sure that it's between plus 4.8 and plus 5.5. .5. Um, 
as you can see, I'm never fouling, essentially, almost never. And I am scooping a, lot, you know, a decent amount, very rarely scooped. Inicious hand fouls 26% of the time. Um, I'm winning the bottom 60%. I'm usually not winning the middle, which makes sense because he has two pair made. And he's, you know, decent chance to qualify. And, you know, more importantly here, I'm winning the top with 10, 10, 76% of the time, which sort of helps explain why that move is dominant. You know, even though it's, it, it makes it very hard for me to go to Fantasyland because I'm only getting there less than 1.5% of the time. I would have thought it's higher, you know, given that the 8s and 5s are live, the king is live, and the 10 is live. But if you think about it, the only way for me really to get there is to make a king and then an 8 and a 5 immediately in the very next move. Because if I just got just a king and a 10, well, it's not obvious that I'd gamble and throw all of this away just for the chance of pulling an 8 and a 5 on the very last move. And, in fact, if you scroll down, if you remember, this is exactly what I got. I got a king and a 5 right away. So how much was that worth? Well, now the average value is 17 points. So I just earned about 12 points on average with that move. And went um, from 1% going to Fantasyland to about 20%. So, you know, still 20%, and then I got it on the last move, obviously. But just, um, just making it right there is worth 12 points, which is kind of interesting. Because um, obviously the, the full house is only worth 6, and the trips are worth 2. You know, but also it, it, it massively increases my chance of scooping. I go from scooping about a third of the time to scooping 80% of the time. Um, and also, on the other hand, even though Anish pulled nice cards and improved his chances to go to Fantasyland, he also improved his chances of fouling. So his move was good, but you know maybe he could have made a better, he could have cut, gotten better cards. Anyway, just wanted to give you an example. I mean, here completely unnecessary. It's pretty obvious putting the two tens was the right move, but just kind of goes to show what you can learn with simulation. You know, even if we accept that the simulation isn't with a perfect opponent. It's just uh, Dr. ABC who plays okay up. Oh, and as you can see, and then while I was talking, it ran 100 more simulations. Usually it runs a little bit faster, but you know the recording software slows it down. So hopefully this was a little bit interesting. A lot of people have asked how the simulation works, and this seemed like an easy example. That's also a hand from the video. So if you have any more questions, uh, please let us know. Thank you.